long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who observe it. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Hi, I'm Eric Beckman, and uh, I was asked by a student to tell my story or at least my, my family story, I suppose. Uh, and my father's name is Robert Arthur Beckman. Uh, his father was Arthur Skippy Beckman, who uh, served in the CCC in the Great Depression. Uh, he also served in the Army in World War II, was stationed up in Alaska. Uh, what's fairly interesting to that, I feel, is that my other grandfather on my mother's side, um, Jerome Schottifer, was also stationed in Alaska during World War II. So it's a nice connection to Alaska with my Aunt Judy also living there. Uh, my grandfather was an orphan, so our family tree, we don't have the, the full nostalgia there from uh, the Great Depression. But some things that we do know is that uh, there was a large number and uh, a very proud family. Uh, but my grandfather served. Uh, eventually, as time goes on, my, my father was born uh, in the late 1950s. Uh, growing up as a kid in the 60s and then in the 1970s, uh, Vietnam War was basically a part of his entire life and at some point in time he decided to join the United States Navy. And so my father joined the Navy. Um, I, I'm not really, I can't really recall how he got to San Diego, but anyways he's in San Diego and he is uh, getting trained to do his stuff on the, the ship, the USS Mobile, where he was a hull technician and mechanic. Uh, so basically, like, if, you, if something breaks, it was my job's dad, my dad's job to go fix it, whether it was a, a pipe, whether it was the side of the ship, uh, whether it was security uh, upon a mission that the ship was on. Because sometimes they'd have watches where they basically kind of walk around the ship and make sure things were taken care of. Uh, but anyways, my father was in the Navy there. I've been in contact with some of my father's buddies. Uh, but at some point in time, the USS Mobile uh, was sent over to Vietnam during the war, uh, in the closing years of the war. Uh, and my father was there from 1973, 1975 with the close and the, uh, the fall of Saigon. Uh, Operation Frequent Wind uh, is one of the operations that my father would tell me about, where as the war was coming to a close, we, the United States military, the United States government was trying to get all our allies out, very similar to what we saw with Afghanistan, just trying to get people out as quickly as possible. And so my father on this ship, um, they, would, they would land a helicopter and then the helicopter would unload and everyone would get on the boat, uh, allies of the United States, people who had sided with the United States, who the communists, uh, the North Vietnamese, there was feared that they would get uh, killed had they stayed. And so as the helicopters were landing, they were getting off. My father was helping that process. But at some point in time, there were so many people that they, they were running out of room. And so uh, th what they would do is they would land, unload. They'd get low on, on fuel. And so the pilots would get out and they would literally just push the helicopters off the side of the ship so they'd get as many people on that boat as possible. Uh, and my father was a, a key member of, or not a key member of that. Uh, my father was also on some of the smaller ships that occasionally would, I think they were called salvage ships, uh, where they would uh, go in up the rivers or wherever they have to go to get soldiers or to get other ships and bring them back to the USS Mobile. And so at this point in my father's visiting in Vietnam or stationed in Vietnam that things go a little awry uh, to the point that my father never really told the full story of what took place. Uh, Vietnam was a scary place. Uh, my uncle uh, Lloyd Hartwell was shot in the butt at one point in time and I've heard some stories about some of the scary things he had to deal with. Uh, but my father never really wanted to discuss these things. Um, and so I don't know the full story. I've reached out to some of his, his buddies to figure out what took place. 
and they filled me in about some things here and there without going into too much detail. Um, but it was something that my father never coped with what was going on. Uh, so he turned uh, to, to alcohol. And my father was never a violent, aggressive drunk. He was never abusive to me, my mother or my brother. Um, but he just coped with what he saw in Vietnam by drinking and it would be a daily occurrence. Um, so fast forward, Vietnam is over. My dad's doing some odd jobs here and there. At one point in time, he was working for an ambulance. Uh, at one point in time, he was working at a funeral home, just trying to figure things out in the late 70s. In the late 70s, similar to today, where you have a recession, interest rates were crazy, double what they are today. Um, and so they were just, my mom and dad were just trying to figure things out. My brother was born, soon after I'll be born. Uh, but on one of the jobs, he had a, a fridge fall on him. I'm not really sure how that happened. I, I think he said it had to do with the ambulance job. But anyways, ended up breaking a rib. Um, so those jobs weren't really a long-standing job for my father. So at some point in time, he decided to go to uh, trade school and he learned to weld. And he picked up the skill of welding and he joined the Michigan Air National Guard, uh, where from basically my entire life, minus the first few years of my life, he was on the military base, Selfridge Air National Guard base in Mount Clemens, Michigan. And I kind of grew up on that base. Not like we didn't live on the base, but in the summers, random times we would go and we would visit the base. Um, and he was a sheet metal worker. So he'd work on A7, F4s, F16s, KC-135s, C-130s, and just kind of fix the metal of the plane. If there's a bust in the wing or mechanically inside it, he would do what he could to fix those things. Um, while serving with Michigan Air National Guard, often he would go up to Alpena for drill weekends a couple times a year uh, or every month. I, I can't really recall what it was now. Um, and then he also served or was sent on assignment, forgive me for not knowing the official terminology here, but uh, he was sent to Norway at one point in time. Uh, he was sent to Saudi Arabia at one point in time uh, in the late 2000s after 9-11. Um, and in the early portions after 9-11, my father was in Insular Air Force Base in Turkey um, as the United States started to ramp up the war on terrorism uh, in the early 2000s. Um, somewhere around 2007 or 8, my father uh, retired from the military and just kind of went about just kind of helping out with the family and, and this and that. Um, but in 2009, my father passed due to complications due to alcoholism, which is why I have been sober for since 2009. You do the math, whatever that is, I've, I've kind of stopped counting the years, but it's, it's been a long time. I have not consumed any alcohol. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the kind of story of my dad and his, his life. So thank you for having me. This is my story. There are millions of other stories Jim Brown, um, United States Marine, uh, was in five years, been three quarters of the way around the world. Uh, I crossed the Atlantic Ocean, I've been around the world physically, uh, had a few bad times in the way I was in, probably most people don't remember it, but uh, Beirut, Lebanon, they blew up the Marine barracks and went in as a mechanic, uh, did Lots of shooting, uh, have six awards for expert riflemen and two for a pistol. Uh, have a good conduct ribbon and a sea service with a bronze star because I did two uh, West Packs, which is a Western Pacific float. Uh, spent 13 months out on the water. Uh, this is just my uh, story of what I was in. Uh, there's many, many stories about other people and their adventures in the service and I think it is a wonderful place to be. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country. In defense of us, in wars far away, the imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. 
we see them as something like the Founding Fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died. And they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us, and all we can do is remember. Let us solemnly remember the sacrifices of all those who fought so valiantly on the seas, in the air, and on foreign shores to preserve our heritage of freedom. Thank you. 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 Thank you, vets. Thank you very much. I want to say a big thank you to our veterans. Uh, we appreciate your service and we wouldn't be here without you. Thank you veterans for all your services. Very much appreciated. Hi, I'd just like to thank all the veterans today on Veterans Day for the sacrifices that they've made. Um, they are truly heroes and uh, if it weren't for them we would not have our freedoms that we have today. So thank you.